What is the athlete most represented by statues in Vancouver? Why, it's the runner, the noble runner. And here in the green pastures of downtown is one of the best. They called him the gazelle, the Vancouver flash, the BC bullet, the Canadian cheetah. Vancouver's own Percy Williams was an international sensation. And he was the fastest man on earth. I hope you'll join me as I explore his incredible life, his tragic and violent death, and some surprises along the way. Percy Williams was born in Vancouver on May 19, 1908, Frederick and Dot. Here's baby Percy with his loving family in front of Stanley Park's famous hollow tree. Before he set the world on fire with his amazing speed, Percy attended elementary school here at Hastings and Victoria Street. This old beauty was built in 1905. As he grew older, young Percy was a scrawny, delicate little lad, so everyone was surprised when he started showing glimpses of his super speed here at Simon Fraser School at 15th and Columbia, built in 1910. Ooh, and here's Percy with his pet doggy spot. Percy then attended King Edward High School, which used to be here at Oak and 12th. At 15 years old, Percy took ill. He got hit with rheumatic fever, hit hard. Luckily, he survived, but doctors said his heart was damaged and he best not exercise anymore. Despite those doctors' warnings, young Percy decided to join a race here one afternoon, and everyone who watched was speechless. The diminutive lad just seemed to float away from everyone. A school janitor named Bob Granger took note and became Percy's running coach. Sometimes Percy met Coach Bob for practice at 5th and Hemlock. Athletic Park was here. Coach Bob had a radical passive training program to keep Percy's legs fresh. A little jogging, couple of starts, and lots of visualizing. They would kick back on the grass and study other runners. And for pre-race warm-ups, Percy was wrapped in warm blankets, getting to the start line as late as possible. And young Percy started winning races. Lots of them. In fact, he obliterated Canadian school records in the 100 and 200 meter sprints. Percy lived by the Ten Commandments of sport. If he lost, he never made an excuse and always congratulated the winner. And when he won, he stayed humble. Here's Percy at Athletic Park with his chums. He's second from the right. In June 1928, 20-year-old Percy left his home here at 196 West 12th for Olympic qualifying races in Hamilton, Ontario. To everyone's surprise, the scrawny little kid from nowhere won the 100 and 200 meter races there, and then he was on a ship to the Amsterdam Olympics. They put the Canadian team in a cheap hotel, and Percy slept on a flimsy cot in a small room with three teammates. He shared a bathtub with 50 people. It was a body part of town, and Coach Bob would tell the midnight drunks in the bars to be quiet so Percy could sleep. The track wasn't available, so Percy had to practice his starts in his room. His buddies held up a mattress, and poor Percy had to blast into the filthy pad at full speed. When 5'6", 115 pound Percy arrived for the 100 meter heats, he was surrounded by large, wealthy, experienced athletes, and some insulted him with disrespectful jabs. You're easy pickings, boy. You sure you're up for this, kid? Percy never said a word. He believed in good manners and good sportsmanship. Coach Bob would identify the fastest runner in each heat and tell Percy to track him and run just fast enough to advance. And it worked. Everyone was dumbfounded when little Percy made it to the final heat. Bob massaged Percy's legs with cocoa butter and wrapped him in warm blankets told him to think it was just another high school race. He was a delicate runt from nowhere. He had no chance, no chance. Well, someone forgot to tell Percy. On July 30, 1928, the runners got in place for the 100 meter final. The starter's pistol shot and they were off. Percy exploded into full stride on his first step. At 20 meters, Percy's nerves are gone and he's running smooth. At 50 meters, Percy pulls into the lead. He's reached maximum speed. At 60 meters, Percy's being challenged. At 80 meters, Coach Bob is in the stands screaming, unaware that his hand is bleeding from smashing the fence in excitement. And then Percy breaks through the tape to win the gold medal. 
It was such a shock to organizers. They had trouble finding a Canadian flag and the band butchered an unrehearsed rendition of the Maple Leaf Forever during the medal ceremony. After the race, Percy celebrated with a salad and a glass of water. As he lay on his flimsy cot that night staring at the dirty ceiling, exhausted Percy knew he had another race. His competitors in the 200 meters hadn't run the 100 like Percy, so they had fresh legs. This made it even more surprising when the little guy made it to the final heat. Once again, Percy had a good start, but with the tape in sight, he was out of gas. His legs had nothing left. The other runners were closing in like a pack of crazed dogs. And that's when Percy did something that a century of sports medicine cannot explain. Though he was already running at top speed, Percy changed gears and went even faster. From out of nowhere, Percy unleashed a red-eyed burst of Canadian fury in a final earth-shattering eruption. He blasted through the tape and won his second gold medal. Percy Williams was the world's fastest human. Notice how Percy didn't pin his numbers to his chest. His are much lower. Perhaps he was too proud of that maple leaf to cover it up. George Stanley was inspired by this photo when he designed Canada's new flag 40 years later. After he received his second gold medal, a humble Percy was overheard saying quietly to himself, four years ago a doctor man in Vancouver told me I had a leaky heart. Look at me today. Later, he returned to his hotel where there was a huge crowd. He asked someone what was going on. They told him they were waiting to meet Percy Williams. So he had a little fun and hung out for a while as they all wondered what the world's fastest man looked like and when he might appear. Meanwhile, a horde of reporters was at that front door, right here at Percy's family home. They desperately wanted to know Percy's future plans. Percy got off his return ship in Quebec, and as he made his way west by train, there were huge ceremonies at Montreal, Toronto, Hamilton, Winnipeg, and Calgary. He was a national phenomenon, and he was flooded with gifts and adoration. When he finally arrived here at the CPR station on September 14, 1928, a massive crowd roared with pride. With the civic holiday proclaimed, people of all ages flooded the streets to watch his parade go up Granville, down Georgia, and into Stanley Park, where he received a very surprising gift. I hope you'll join me for part two when I show you that surprising gift he received here at Brockton Oval. We'll visit the site of Percy's violent death, and our friends at the BC Sports Hall of Fame are waiting to show us some of Percy's personal items. I highly recommend Samuel Hawley's phenomenal book on Percy, I Just Ran. Special thanks to Sam for all his help. More info in the details section below. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. Thank you for watching. Please click the subscribe button. Until I see you back here for part two, be good to the other.